there everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Today I'm going to be doing a video about a watercolour portrait illustration that I've done and I'm also going to be telling you a couple of tips and tricks that I've found personally have helped me specifically do portraits which I have found very difficult before. Firstly I have to address two of the most basic techniques when using watercolour which is the wet on dry technique and the wet on wet technique. The wet on dry technique is very self-explanatory, it's wet paint on dry paper and you will use this to create a lot of definition, probably around the facial features, the eyes, the nose and the mouth where there are dark parts, you will more likely use wet on dry because you want to have nice crisp lines. The wet on wet technique is used to create a very soft gradient, it is wet paint on wet paper. And you will use this to get a really smooth effect when you're blending colours together. It should look a bit seamless where it just flows into each other and you'll have a really smooth gradient. And I like to use this personally on the skin specifically to get blushes and loose outlines of shadows and the frame of the portrait that I'm working with or light and dark values roughly. Hopefully you do have an outline of the image that you're working with. I would definitely recommend that if you haven't. Don't just go into painting watercolour onto your paper with absolutely no um, outline or structure of what it is you're painting because I just can't imagine that going well at all. You can also do what I've done here, which is apply some water and then you can just drop little bits of pigment, get a lot of pigment onto your paintbrush and create little watercolour blooms, which can be a nice effect and they will fade out into the water. Of course, how much your watercolour blends does depend on how much water you've put on the paper. You do want to get a nice application of water if you're doing the wet on wet technique. Do make sure that your paper is not saturated, it's not falling apart, but you have a nice layer because otherwise the pigment isn't going to blend quite as well. And obviously how intense your colour is depends on how much pigment you have on your paintbrush. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to this channel. I like to do lots of art videos, specifically traditional art. I haven't yet tried digital, but I will one day. Uh, I look specifically at things like watercolour, gouache, maybe oil. Who knows? I'm open to all mediums and all techniques because I'm very new to the art world. So I hope you'll join me on my journey. And if you want to be notified of my other videos, do click the bell button and leave a like and comment below. The first thing that I'm going to mention other than the techniques is my equipment. I'm going to be using my Archie's watercolour paper cold pressed. It's cold pressed and hot pressed and the cold pressed is the more textured paper and mine is 300 GSM which is pretty thick, it's a good thickness and the reason that you want to be aware of the GSM of your watercolour paper is because if you're using a lot of water, a lot of the wet on wet technique and you want to do a lot of layers, having a thicker paper is really going to help you. If you don't have a thick paper, as I've seen unfortunately with new beginners who have literally just picked up their watercolour set and maybe they put it on regular paper, not even watercolour paper. Unfortunately that paper is just not equipped for having water applied to it and it's going to buckle and it's going to warp. And then what happens is just chaos. All your water is gonna pool into one section and it's gonna drag the pigment with it. And then unfortunately you're going to have pools of water and pigment in places that you just don't want it and you can't control it. Because of course, that is one of the things with watercolor, as everyone knows, that is an element of it being out of your control. Especially if you use the wet on wet technique, the pigment and the water is going to do what it wants. And there's only a certain amount of control that you can implement. You can work back into it with your brush, but 
obviously the water has a mind of its own. We'll just do what it wants anyway. The watercolour that I'm going to be using is my Winsor & Newton watercolour palette. There's not many colours in it, it's a travel watercolour set. But I'm also going to be using a couple of watercolour Winsor & Newton tubes, which are in primary colours. So your red, yellow and blue. To begin with, as you might have seen, I like to use the wet on wet technique just to put in those soft blushes and those shadows and then what you're going to inevitably do is use layers so you'll put down your first wash and then layer on top of it I find this personally sometimes a little bit difficult because I can be a smidge impatient with waiting for sections to dry but the easiest thing is to step away from that section and do another bit if like me you're working on the eye and you're tempted to just you just really want to do the eye because you love painting eyes but you have to wait for the paint to dry especially if you want to create those sharp uh, definitions and outlines which will really make a feature pop you can't apply that on wet paper because it's just gonna bleed into each other and look really really messy you should also use layers, I would recommend it, because it will help you get the right intensity of colour. Everyone knows, if you're looking at this video, then you almost definitely know that watercolour can be quite a subtle medium compared to things like oil and acrylic. It's not quite as bold. So to help get that intensity of colour, I would definitely recommend using plenty of layers. I used, I think, on the eyes, maybe five or six, probably more. Um, I wasn't counting, you just kind of go back into it and then wait for it to dry and then work back on top of it again. But it will really help make those features pop and bring out that real depth of color that you want to achieve. Especially on the eyes. I recently got a tip off Audra Eau Claire's video where she said that you should definitely paint a colour over the eyes, as in don't leave the eyes, the white of the paper, give them a sort of wash and I definitely found that to be really useful because I mean eyes aren't white white, not white how we know them, they've always got a shadow on them or a colour and it will really help create the shape of the eye if you don't add stark white onto it. The only place where I've used very bright white is just for highlights to get like the shine on the eye and it will really help just make it extra pop. The reason that I've done this design and that I really like this design is that I was using a lot of references. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with using references. You definitely could not look at my references and say hey that's the same picture because it absolutely is <laughs> nothing like it. I did see a hat on Pinterest and I was like, I love that design of that hat. So I've put that hat into my picture for two reasons actually. Firstly, because the hat creates a lot of values. Obviously it creates a shadow over her face, which makes the picture automatically more interesting. And having that dark and light helps again to emphasize the shape and depth of your face face. So I would recommend choosing a picture that has a lot of strong values, which is strong light tones and strong dark tones. If you choose an image that has sort of like a basic, if, like this is the same lighting, then it's going to be a lot harder for you to create that depth and it could end up looking a little bit flat if you're not careful. It's a very tricky thing to do. So that was my first reason for using a hat. The second reason was that I am not the most skilled at hair. I'm doing the hair now and I was actually really, really pleased with how it came out, which I think might be the first time I've been happy. I mean, really happy with how I've done hair. There's definitely some places for improvement still, but overall I was quite happy. But <laughs> one of the reasons I liked the idea of the hat was because I was thinking, hmm, less hair. So that's why I ended up putting a hat in as well. 
And obviously she has her bird sidekick because what girl doesn't need an animal sidekick? That would just make life so much cooler. I personally think watercolor is quite a forgiving medium. I know some people are a bit back and forth on it and find it a bit tricky because the water can be unpredictable. But now that I've used gouache and acrylic, and then I went back to watercolor and I immediately felt like, oh, okay, yeah, I can, I can correct my mistakes. You can go back over any pigments that are slightly wrong apply lots of water and then gently dab away at them and you've kind of more or less fixed your problem. I really didn't like watercolor at school. Like I, I avoided it so, so much at school. It just wasn't really, I don't know, it just wasn't really my thing. I didn't really like the subtleness, but now I've also added uh, some gouache and I've started to incorporate it with other mediums, which I really think has helped my love of watercolor develop. One of the things that I was also aware of is because I had strong values and I had these shadows, was that I wasn't going to make my shadows, your brain might kind of maybe immediately think, oh, black, gray, those are the colors that we normally associate with shadows. Dark blues perhaps, but this is an opportunity for you to experiment, especially perhaps with your color schemes. I was watching a video from Hey Carla, who is another illustrator, and she recommended using purple with brown. I knew that I wanted to make the eyes brown and I knew that I wanted the hair to be like a honey blonde brown. So I thought I'm gonna try using purples, reds for the shadows. And I found that actually it was really fun to do it that way, really fun. And I felt like it made the picture a bit more interesting to look at. You don't have to go with the first thing that pops into your head. Maybe have a think about how it's gonna fit into your color scheme. I knew at the very start that I wanted to do this honey colored blonde and green and grays and purples. So that was kind of the color scheme that I was working with. And I think it's really interesting to just, especially with shadows and things, play around with the colors a little bit. As you can see here, I'm also using coloring pencils. This is one of my absolute favorite other mediums to use with watercolor. It is so useful. As I said, watercolor can sometimes create uh, wobbly lines. You can lose the definition a little bit. So if you have that, you can just go back into it with a coloring pencil. I personally am a much more confident drawer than I am a painter. So I really love just to go back and add those little extra details that really make things stand out and shine and doing a coloring pencil is the easiest way for me to achieve that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you'll find some of the tips <laughs> useful and that you can take them away and use them on your own watercolor portraits. I hope you'll join me here for the next video and also don't forget, please do subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to be posting another video in two weeks, so I hope to see you all then. Bye everyone!